Hi there. We all hate 2020's pandemic. Some get to work from home 24 by 7 and are expected to be grateful for the privilege. Others seek their soulmates trying to decide whether or not those eyes are the ones they want to wake up next to forever. I tell you a COVID joke now, but you have to wait two weeks to see if you get it. By the way, President Trump and the First Lady both were quarantined in Walter Reed Hospital. Pray for them and then maybe watch our videos on the history of quarantine and how Dr. Reed helped defeat yellow fever. Humanity has beaten a lot of diseases. 1918 Spanish flu, cholera, malaria, smallpox, typhoid. Hmm? That should give us some hope for COVID-19 and, and maybe someday the common cold. <laughs> now let's go and see what we get just from one quarantine that happened. The most deadly pandemic ever is the plague. Starting in the year 550 AD and lasting for almost 200 years, the Justinian plague killed between 50 and 100 million people. Almost a thousand years later, it was worse, worse. In the 14th century, one to 200 million people died from it. That's half the population of Europe, maybe more. The word plague is still used to describe horrible things that continue to plague us. 1665 to 66 was less horrible, just terrible. Bubonic plague killed 150,000 Londoners in 18 months. No one knew about germs, so there were no antibiotics. People didn't bathe or even have clean water to drink. The streets were filthy, animals everywhere. They didn't have sewers, so people just tossed poop out of the window. Ah, can you imagine? Cambridge University near London closed, so a student went to his family's farm instead. Amazingly, at least to me, he made the world remember those years for something other than the Great London Plague. History calls his quarantine time Annus Mirabilis, the year of wonders. Wonders. You see, that guy was Isaac Newton, the father of modern science. And while he was in isolation, he thought, and the things he thunk are still helping us today. By the end of 1666, he had invented the mathematics to solve problems of continuous change. Now this is incredibly useful because almost everything in the universe is in motion or changing. Stars, atoms, the economy, plants, or even roller coasters. What he invented is called the calculus. I don't know why the, the is there. I just know I hated studying it. Another, by the way, a little while after Newton finished, another guy, Gottfried Leibniz, invented it again. Mathematicians today remember Leibniz because the notations they use in the calculus are the ones that Leibniz came up with. Newton also experimented with light. Back then, everyone thought colors came from mixing light and darkness. Isaac, he wasn't a sir yet. Put a hole in his window shutter and used a pair of prisms to mix the sunbeam. Hmm? He then watched to see what happened. His discovery that white light is made up of seven visible colors is revolutionary and it's an important part of today's science of optics. That's two. 
Now for the big one, the apocryphal apple hitting Newton on the head. Well, you see, Newton realized that it was gravity that made the apple fall, and so the moon had to be falling too. So here's the question. Why doesn't the moon land on your head? What keeps the moon from crashing into the earth, huh? Huh? Newton figured it out. He figured out that the moon wants to go straight out into space, but, and there's always a but, the pull of gravity keeps dragging it down towards the earth and it goes into orbit. Hmm? The math Newton developed about gravity helped put men and women into space on the moon and in a couple of years on Mars. To cap off that period, in 1668, Newton invented, built, and displayed the first modern telescope. Hmm? Reflecting, not refracting. Look up the difference. It was hugely better, clearer, and more powerful. Not bad for his being in quarantine. No electricity, no internet, no indoor plumbing where you use the newspapers when you run out of toilet paper. The times were rough. <laughs> the times were rough. Get it? We're all in this together today, and we all hope it will end soon. But let's be real. We have so much more than those in the past. And they survived much worse, and some of them achieved. Think about that. Newton said, if I see further, it's because I stand on the shoulders of giants. Hmm? You. Go stand on someone's. You. Be someone's. Alas, by the way, Albert Einstein had his own Anus Mirabilis. Look it up. 1905. And then ask, how many other great years were there? I am Mike, and our channel is growing thanks to you. But, <laughs> and please, here's another but. Do not ask us for the calculations and calculus of our growth. Do. Hmm? Subscribe, follow, tell your friends, do all the rest. But always, always be more better. Body, mind, and spirit. And then be even more better when you tell someone what Newton did from an apple, and maybe get someone to laugh at a bad joke. All jokes are inside ones now. <laughs> Tell us if you like this one, if it's been useful. This has been a pleasure. Thank you. Bye now. Thank you.